Welcome. Welcome to Bethel this morning. We're glad that you could join us. We're going to encourage you to stand up. Stand where you're at. Join us. Sing along. The words are going to be on the screen, and we're going to be praising God together, together with those of us who are on the stage and those who are also watching. It's corporate worship, and we're encouraging you to get involved. So join us as we praise the Lord. Gold is precious and a heart is sweet. So you love this city and you love this tree. Every child out playing in the old front yard. Every baby laying on the bedroom floor. Every dreamer dreaming in a dead end job. Every driver. It changes us, it 
changes what we see what we Good morning, church. Welcome to Bethel Pentecostal Church. My name is Reverend Marisa Rabino, and if this is the first time you're joining us, we'd like to say hello from everyone here at Bethel. Uh, a couple quick little announcements. Uh, the first one is we're excited to announce that we are, are starting our very first Bible study this afternoon, uh, starting Sunday, and it's going to be continuing every other Sunday uh, for the next coming few weeks. So we can gather together. Make sure that you sign up every week for the, the lesson or the, the space because there is limited space available and we have a lot of rules to follow so that we can continue uh, to make sure that we are following our guidelines that the government has set. So stay tuned for that. Um, we're excited to get together with you. And so now just on to our sermon. So Bethel, today is Pentecost Sunday, and I'm so excited to share a great message with you this morning. What is Pentecost Sunday? Well, Pentecost Sunday is 50 days after uh, that Jesus had left and told us that he would come and he would send someone for us. And that was the Holy Spirit. Yes, the other part of God. And so now when that happened, it wasn't something that, that was to take lightly because now the Spirit could live within us. And the story kind of goes like this, is that they were all gathered together, and what happened was they heard a sound like a rushing wind. And when that happened, they looked up, and it looked as though there was these little tongues that were, that were, that were fire that had come upon each and every single person in the room, and they began to speak different languages that they understood. This was a depiction of a rebuilding of what had been broken down in the days of, of, uh, of the Tower of Babel, where they created this giant tower, and God all you know, confused them with different languages, and they were separated, and they weren't going towards things of God because they were trying to get to God on their own rather than letting God be where he's supposed to be and, and be attained 
as God's plan was being fulfilled. And so now we see this amazing moment where God's spirit comes upon each and every one of them. They're now speaking in different languages. The others understand them. They're now filled with a worship to God in serving because they can serve in new ways and exciting methods and in exciting ways for the world now that I had never seen uh, before. And so I'm excited that this is something that we get to celebrate. You may wonder, how do we celebrate these things, you know? Um, a good way is to put a reminder at your home that today is a very important day. Every year, 50 days from Easter, we can celebrate the day of Pentecost. And so this is just an exciting time. Well, we build our church foundation now. So today's message is actually a new start in a series that we're going to be calling A House of Worship. Now, church... You are the house that God dwells in. If we are vessels for his spirit, then this means that we are to live life in acting of worship, in our song, in our life, in our behavior, and hailing him as our king. But do we do that well? And so I'm going to break this down today. And so if you have your Bibles, I'd urge you to get them open and we're going to open them to Psalm 99. And we're going to go from Psalm 99 all the way from verse 1 to the end at verse 9. So I'm going to give you a second to do that, and then we're going to read together. All right, so I hope you're ready. And it says this, The Lord reigns. Let the people tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. The king of the might loves justice. You have established equity. You have exuded justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Worship at his footstool. Holy is he. Now I want to just uh, debrief on a few words here. Like the word Zion. There's two depictions. Zion's another word for heaven or the kingdom of God within Jerusalem, which is now you. And so God's kingdom reigns supreme in you, church. And so, so this is something that we have to take to heart quite, quite personally because if God dwells within us, then that gives us a form of responsibility that we must live up to. And we're never going to attain to that level of Christhood the way Christ did, but we can definitely do our best to get there as, as far as we can achieve through the help of God and the help of those around us in church. Now, before I get to my first point, I just wanted to bring up a little bit of a background and context to our sermon. So this is considered one of the, the, the it's actually the last royal psalm that King David had written. And the reason they're called the royal psalms, which are six in total, is because David was referring to God as king. And so David was here worshiping the Lord God as his king, even though he was the king of the nations. And so why do I bring this up? We should be worshiping our God as our king. Now, we've been living in a society that doesn't necessarily coincide with that concept. See, we have a de democratic view and all those things are really good. And you see, God gives us so much space to do our own thing that, uh, that we're able to live life as though there's, there's no real issue. But see, if we're to worship God with our all, God is sovereign. God rules and he reigns supreme over all things. And so we are to worship him as our king. If God commands, then we are his servants. We are subjugated to our God, our king, our creator. And if God asks us to worship him in song and in praise and in love and in our life, then why are we not doing that to that extent? Now, I know what you're thinking. Pastor, I'm not perfect. And I know that's, that's true. And that's okay. Because even myself, even... Even every pastor will fail to hit that mark constantly. But this is where we have the grace through Jesus Christ. That propitiation, that, that salvation, that, that free gift that we did not deserve, that Christ died on that cross so that we may live a full life without sin, without blemish, under Christ's forgiveness and love. And this is something that's amazing for each and every one of us to grasp. But nonetheless, God is king. He is the one seated on that throne. And we are to worship him as our king. Which brings me to my second point. Worship him in song. See, if God is our king, 
And we can, we can find them as the foundation of our freedom, as the hope in our hallelujahs, in the joy in our salvation. Then what we can do is we can sing to him the praises that are due. And you could be thinking, Pastor, you know, uh, I know you want us to sing. I know you want us to, to, to run out, but we're, we're Pentecostals, guys. You know, we were the, the, the crazy cousins of the Baptists, right? We were the ones they looked to and go, those guys are a little too much with their song and with their exuberance in the Spirit. You see, being the day of Pentecost that we're celebrating, this is the exuberance that we're afforded to with the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit. See, we've been too worried about what others may think or look, but we're only to worry about what God thinks of us. You see, I used to have an issue with, uh, with flaggers, and then God really hit me. They are worshiping with their all. And so why should I have a problem with their flagging, with their dancing? In fact, now it brings me joy to watch them because you can see the love coming out of them, the excitement, the worship to the Lord God, their sacrifice, their, their giving to our Lord God in their dance, in their song. And so if they're giving their all, should we not give our all? Hands raised, voices loud, not worrying what the next person might think to the left or to the right, but worrying about what God is thinking. He's enjoying our song. See, David danced and sung naked. And so we've got at least not to worry about doing that that way, but we can, we can at least give him our song in our full, in our heart, in our spirit, in spirit and in truth and in love and in dignity and all those things. We should be giving that to God in the, in the most exuberant of ways because God is do this. Now, church... You know, I find that as, as we progress, not just here, but in every church that I've been to, um, there are some churches that are of worship and some churches that are of service and some churches. And, and what I think is a good combination of them all really makes up a very good, well-rounded church. See, we need to be uh, doers of the word, not just hearers also. We need to be servants, servant-hearted. We need to be loving in all things. We need to be worshipers, not just in our song too, and we're going to get to that in a sec, but in our tithes, in our life, in our actions, in our scriptures, in our prayers. We need to be worshipers in all those aspects. And this completes our Christian life and our closeness to God through all those things. Which, again, rounds me off to my third point. Worship Him in your life. It's an easy uh, a formula, and I'll tell you it this way. If you're worshiping God in your prayer life, you're worshiping God in your song through corporate prayer and worship, and even, even at-home worship, uh, and, and, and prayer and song, okay? If you're worshiping God in your tithes, which I know may seem like, okay, well, we, well you know, how do we worship God in our tithes? If we can give God his 10%, okay? He gives us everything. Everything else would come easy if we're able to do this and give him in our sacrifice just that, that amount. So tithing is actually an act of worship, not, not, a, not a, a thing that we would have to just struggle over, even though for a lot of us, giving something we've worked hard for is really hard to do. But remember, God gave us everything. And yet, this is just an easy way to show Him our obedience, our love. And it says in the Bible that the heavens will open up and, and all those things will happen. Blessings that the Lord has will come upon you and rain upon your family. And so, uh, that's something that I kind of want. And so, I, I'm hoping that you guys want that too. Uh, we worship Him in our action. You see, Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them in the ways of the Lord. And if we're to do this, this is an act of worship. And when he was saying that, um, he was actually saying that to every single person, not just the disciples. So if you've got a bathtub, you've got a baptismal tank. And I love that because um, that means that we can actually go and make disciples tangibly. And I know that society right now is, is preventing us from doing that to our full extent. But there are workarounds. Just like we're doing sermons online, uh, we're able to call people and video chat them and, and all sorts of things to connect with them. And so I encourage you, um, talk to someone. If you're mentoring someone, call them and give them a word of encouragement. And if you're being mentored, call them and tell them that you appreciate them. I mean, it's something that, that, uh, that we do as a family, that we lift each other up and give each other that love that Jesus had shown us. Right? And I love this because if we're actually looking at Scripture, it says this um, in verse 8. O oh Lord, our God, you answered them. You were a forgiving God to them, but an avenger of their wrongdoings. You see, when God asks us to do these things in our life, he's telling us that we have a duty, we have a job, and God will hold us accountable to that one day. I don't want to be that guy 
in heaven going, well, God, I know you asked me to do this, but... You see, God is understanding, but he's also just. And we can't put just uh, in, in a category where a God that isn't really that just, you know, just because of the sake of our feelings, falls in line with what we want to hear. God will let us know that we needed to do better. And I, I want to do my all for the Lord because he has given me everything in life, everlasting life even. The next part that we, we go in verse 9, it says, Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. See, we reign him as king because he is supreme and holy and above all things. We worship him in our song because this is our exuberant way out to give God back uh, his love, his, his excitement, uh, something that we can vocally voice out. You know, Theoretically, we're going to be singing praises the majority of the time or, or a vast portion of the time that we're in heaven. So we might as well get an early start now because trust me, you don't want to be that one left out when all the cherubim are going, holy, holy is the Lord. And you're the one going, yes, the Lord is good. You know, and you, you got the little sway going back and forth. That's, you got to get some excitement, some movement, you know, some hallelujahs going in there. And I hope you said amen because I want you to say amen. <laughs> But at the same time, we are called to be a house of worship. So church, I call you today. I, I, I want to challenge you. If you've been having struggles on, on giving God your all, just take a moment, close your eyes, no music needed, and give God that quiet silence. And you'll start hearing that still small voice of God saying that I love you and I'm proud of you and I, and, and I can't wait to hear more of you. That ignites a flame that just erupts that move mountains. And if God's asking us to move a mountain, then we'll know that through his Holy Spirit, we'll have the power to do it. I mean, I'm not saying go and try to push a mountain literally, but we'll see. Who knows? Maybe God had something. He did for Moses, and he, he literally parted the Red Sea. So who knows what God has planned for you? Um, as we close, I wanted to, uh, to encourage you guys that if you guys have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Today is as good as day as any other. Just like in the book of Acts, when, when, uh, when this was like the, the, the engagement of the New Testament church, something that we're actually living now. Um, they, they, they had that, that moment where those gift, that gift of tongues had, had come upon them. I want that for you. You should want that. In fact, Paul says, seek all the gifts. And so how do we do this? By being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to have that prayer for you now. Uh, and, and if this is you, please, Talk to us. We want to make sure that we can actually uh, give you an understanding of what is going on in your life. Because when that Holy Spirit comes, it is something that, that, that we may not be able to understand uh, in, in the physical realm. But let me tell you something. God has everything in spirit and in truth, like I mentioned. And so we want to walk to, through that with you. So, again, let's, let's, we're going to say a prayer right now. And if that's you that wants that Holy Spirit, we're going to invite him to come into our lives. And we're going to ask for that same gifting that the, the apostles that had, that all those people had during the days in the book of Acts. So let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you, Lord, that you are uh, as amazing as you are now, as you have been for all eternity. God, I thank you for the gift that you've given us of eternal life. But now, Lord, I ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit baptism. And so, Father... I ask for that Holy Spirit to baptize me now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I receive all the gifts that come with that. And so, Father, I thank you now. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And everyone here said, Amen. God bless you today. We hope you have an amazing Sunday. Remember, if you've, if you've felt anything, just give God his moment, and he will come upon you. And it's as simple as that to receive that baptism. Just ask God, and he will endow you with the Spirit. All right, God bless you. Happy Pentecost Sunday to everyone out there, and, and we hope to see you soon. All right, bye, guys. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close no thing can compare your our living hope your presence i've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love 
When my heart becomes free and my shame is undone, your presence, Lord. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that could ever come. Nothing can compare, you're our living hope, your presence. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free and my shame is on. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. Your anthem, your renown, be 
We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. 